streaming. We're going live now. Uh, just so everyone knows that we are having a couple of little technical issues on getting Ross in. Um, we're trying to work that out. So he will continue to try to pop in. In the meantime, if you are chiming in, um, okay, I think that might work here, Ross. I, I hear you, so I'm going to just add you in here. All right. Can you hear me? <laughs> All right. Can everybody hear Ross? Ross, go ahead and talk. It seems like I could. <laughs> hey, Demetrius, how you doing, buddy? Test, test. I can't hear him. Well, I hear you guys with echo in the background now. He's live. Yeah. All right. I'm going to punt. Okay, you'll have to <laughs> read my lips. Read my lips. <laughs> okay. All right, so uh, go ahead and tell us uh, where you're from and uh, South Carolina. Hey, Joanne, how you good to see you? Demetrius, buddy, good to see you. You seem to be always the first one chiming. I'd love to see that. Uh, we got a good topic for you guys today. Um, Let's just see who Let's all see who uh, pops in. We'll give you a couple minutes. And we've got the echo in the background. There, okay, one second. <clears throat> all right. Okay. And we got India. We're in India. All right. And can you hear me now, Russ? Yep, yeah, we're good. All right. So it was on your end. <laughs> yeah, I knew it was on my end. <laughs> right. Not in New York. Good to see you. The, the, the system kept dropping us, and so and it wasn't connecting my. Uh, somehow, it lost my uh, audio. Slovenia. As well. Good to see you. Australia, Massachusetts, New Hampshire. Nice, Georgia. Oh, she. I'm guessing that's Delhi, not Deki, because I don't know of any Deki India. So yeah, there you go. You fixed it. <laughs> um, I've, I've been, been to Decky. I'm pretty sure I've been to Decky. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've never been to Decky. <laughs> it's it's right outside of uh, it's on that little road. <laughs> yeah. It's a suburb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Scotland, nice. Houston, California. <laughs> Awesome. We got a um, Arizona. We got a lot of people coming in from all over the place, which is awesome. Good to see. All right. So today we have a good topic. If you want to start off there, Ross, we've got. Um... Well, I'll tell you, um, it's been crazy the amount of excitement that we've gotten about today's show. Um, I mean, we I, I want to say we kind of touched a nerve, but we, we definitely touched something because people are just very, very excited. Um, so what we, what we started with on Sunday is we, we told everybody to be aware of one, 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 11, 11, however you want to look at it. And, um, uh, primarily because yesterday was 11, 11. So, um, what happened was crazy. So I'm just going to give you a few comments that people posted, um, as we made everyone more aware of that. So Tommy said, um, I was making breads, which I sell only to friends. And it's not a regular one, it's a low carb. And I'm a nurse and the idea behind my baking is to help people with medical diagnosis that who need low carb comfort food. So I noticed the time and paused and started praying for people I, and because I love to heal. That's amazing. That's a great anchor to those, those particular uh, digits. Jacob says, feeling grateful for my family. Sent dad a text thanking him for offering to help me with some unexpected bills today. Just noticed a text was sent at 11, 11 today on November 11th. <laughs> that is so freaking cool. And then Jean wrote, she goes, I was having a meeting with my sales uh, team and uh, uh, let's see. Um, oh, in the, in the conference room. And I turned my phone on as it warrants me to send an urgent message um, about the promotion on 11-11 to one of the influencers of my other new business, right smack 11-11 peered on my phone. Looking forward to your explanation of why this is working, Ross and Gary. So what's it all about? What is going on here? Um, 
what is it that 1111 affects people so much? Uh, so before we go there, let's talk a little bit about how we work, particularly how the, the, uh, the brain operates, how it works. It's called the Reticular Activating System, or RAS for short. The RAS is located at the base of the brain, right above the brain stem. And it's a powerful part of the brain. You don't hear a lot about it, but it's huge. It does so much work for us. Um, it, to a certain degree, it kind of creates our reality believe it or not. Um, primarily, uh, it dampens the world. It is your brain's filter of the noise from the world around you. So when I say noise, I'm not necessarily talking about sound per se, but to, agree, to a degree, yes, I am. So let me give you an example. Um, my wife, uh, for example, when she was younger, she lived next to railroad tracks. And, you know, every now and then I can hear you know, the trains in, in our um, in, in our town and I, I'm always going, God, I don't know how people can just live down there. She goes, oh, I used to. She goes, after a while, you don't even hear them anymore. And that really kind of struck me. I'm like, how can that be? You don't just get used to something like that, or do you? What it is, if we look at it, the, the way that the, the body and the brain actually works is it is the reticular activating system that is filtering out those trains or filtering out those airplanes that fly up ahead or above you. Um, because what it does, it's like, oh, I know what that is. I don't need to worry about it anymore. And so it basically just filters that, that out. And you, don't, you didn't tell it to, it just did. It's just like, oh, that's just, that's <clears throat> unnecessary data. You don't need to worry about that. Um, because it's always going to be there. It's not going to endanger you, but it's going to be there. <clears throat> I don't want it to um, basically interrupt with the rest of your day and all the other filtering that I have to do. So I'm just going to basically turn it off so you don't hear it. Okay. Now, if that train had a different sound, all of a sudden tomorrow, they figured out some way to make it sound different then the RAS would have to go through that process again because it's something different. It, does, it didn't recognize it. So in today's world, there is so much data, sounds, images, messages coming at us. Our brains simply can't take it all in. There's so much data. So it relies on the RAS to auto filter for us. It's given a list of priorities from the subconscious mind. So... Um, these priorities are determined to let in or, or be on the lookout for um, particular information. So when I say it's a filter, it doesn't, filtering doesn't mean it's a one-way uh, one track. It can filter what it's going to be on the search for too. It will sift through billions of data, bits of data, and at any given time, select the information and say, oh, this is what I need. Okay, this is what I was instructed to, the subconscious mind told me, this is a piece of data that we, I need to keep and let the conscious mind know. So that's why when you buy a new car and then all of a sudden you start seeing the same car everywhere, it's like, I never noticed there was so many of these. That's why, because it became top of mind, the subconscious mind for a short period of time went, this is different, this is something new, this is something you were focused on for a little bit. And then all of a sudden, those cars, after a while, they just kind of disappear because it's it goes again. Okay, I don't need that data anymore. I don't need to be looking for that anymore because you found your car, you're just happy with your car, and now I don't need to look at that anymore. So it's everywhere. So mm -hmm. it's why you can tune out a crowd full of talking people yet immediately snap to attention when someone says your name. Has that ever happened? You've been in a big conference room or something like that, and there's just people chatting, 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 and all of a sudden, Mary from the back of the room is, hey, Ross, hey, Ross, and you're just like, what? You hear it, because that's your RAS is, is always filtered, filtering to hear something that's going to pertain directly to you. So your RAS takes what you focus on creates a filter for it. And remember, that's a, that's a two-way filter. Then it sifts through the incoming data, presents only the pieces that are important to you. All of this happens without even noticing it. You're, you're just like, oh, how did this happen? 
because it's it's just you've been growing you've lived with this all your life the ras is work from the day you were born the ras programs itself to work in your favor without you actively even doing anything about it maybe until now when you look at it this way the right training for the ras will steer you in any direction you tell it to but remember there's two sides to this coin focus on the bad things and you will invite negativity into your life focus on the good things and they are revealed to you because your brain is seeking them out. It's almost like magic, filtering, filtering the world around you. So when it, it when it's bringing in those good things, it's kind of like the law of attraction to a certain degree because you're focusing on those good things. You know, you conscious subconsciously instructed it. I want you to seek this information out. So that person that might be able to help you with your business, okay has probably already been there all the time. But then when you change the programming of your RAS, now all of a sudden you're like, oh, I didn't realize that this person could do this for me. They always could, but something shifted, something inside you shifted. And that's why um, or how this whole process works. So it really comes down to what you focus on expands. So we suggest that you train your RAS by taking your subconscious thoughts and marrying them to your conscious thoughts. This basically means that you can focus hard on your goals and dreams and your RAS will just reveal everything that you need to achieve them. It'll find the information, it'll find the opportunities, and it'll push away the things that are not going to be useful to you because that's what you've instructed it to do. That's the filter. Okay, it's very, very cool. So these past three days, many of you felt the synchronicity of 1111. We didn't place all those numbers in your life. We simply stimulated your RAS to be on the lookout for them. Okay, so when we asked you to tell us your thoughts and feelings were, we didn't give you those thoughts and feelings. Okay, many of you already had the beliefs and memories that were attached to them. Think about that. Are we on the same page? Give us a yes or a no down below. There we go. Yeah. Okay, your beliefs and memories were already attached to those numbers. Okay, so the question to you, and this is what we've talked about in all, in some variation, all the last few shows, is did you choose those beliefs and feelings or did somebody else? In yeah, the, in, in the same. Go ahead, Gary. Yeah, you know, I think that it's uh, it's just coming in. People are saying yes, um, yes, it's very interesting. This is my first time on this page. That's great. So yeah, you're getting a lot of people that are saying yes. They 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 had that experience too. So that's mm -hmm. good. Yeah. In the same way, the RS RAS seeks the information that validates your beliefs too. It filters through the world the parameters you give it, and your beliefs shape those parameters. That's why beliefs are so, so strong, so important. Um, the RAS helps you seek what you see, but does not tell you how to think. It just, there's one, 1111. It's up to you what, what it means to you because it, it means different things. And that's part of this, this whole uh, process we've gone through for, the, for all these, these last few days. If we go into the comments section um, underneath the, uh, the task, you're going to see that everybody has a different reaction to it. It doesn't mean the same to everyone. It means something a little bit different. That's the beauty of it. So did you yeah, hear what I world, said? You know, we live in a world right now where um, so many people are caught up in um, the polarity of I'm right, you're wrong. And I think that's a really important point is to say that, hey, no, you have a different perspective. Doesn't make you right. Doesn't make me wrong. And, um, you know, your what you have had coded into those numbers um, is based on your experiences, the things you've been exposed to, um, you know, the, the things you generally gravitate to anyways, because your RAS kind of has been set up that throughout your life. And, um, yeah, I, I think it's, it's important for people to realize that even though we had a ton of different 
responses what 1111 could mean, uh, there is no right answer. There is no one answer is probably the better way to say it, right? Um, because you ultimately at some point had choice, right? You had choice of what you could attach to those digits, right? So <clears throat> can I go ahead with the agreement that there's an overwhelming, there's overwhelming evidence that points to the idea that our thoughts create our reality? At least, you know, that's, that's what we hear so many spiritual quantum reality gurus telling us, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in the comments, tell me if you agree with this, that our thoughts create our reality. Go ahead and let me see. So um, I know there's a delay, so there we go. It's coming in. It <laughs> yes, totally. I've seen um, you've seen me change uh, what I believe, and then things outside myself change. Yeah, you know, and and there's more to that, but there's definitely one of those pieces. So it's it, sometimes it happens fast. Sometimes there's a duration of time for that. <clears throat> And we can kind of go to some of those reasons we have. So there's a lot of people. So yes, thoughts create reality. <laughs> All right. There they are. All right. So yes, I yes, do, yes. Hello. Uh, yes. Yeah. I do agree with that as well. Okay. With um, with many, many, many years uh, of my own personal experience and uh, with my clients has brought me to propose a a more refined hypothesis. All right. So let's try this on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Our reality is not just created by our thoughts. Our because because then what would happen? I mean, if we took that literally, right? If we took that literally, our, our and, and you know, I, I think it's a catchphrase, which is kind of cool. Um, you know, in in the personal development spirituality world, our thought, your thoughts create your reality, type of thing. Well, if that were the case, I would be noticing my reality shift and change so many times all through because my thoughts are changing all the time. So, so that st starts me question, okay, well, if, if my reality isn't shifting or adjusting that quickly, as quickly as my thoughts, then how is it that my thoughts create my reality? Right? Well, <clears throat> my refined hypothesis, okay. Our reality is created by the most consistent and congruent thoughts, emotions, and beliefs that we sustain over a period of time. Okay? So it's not just every thought you have. So does that mean you can never have a negative thought? Does that make you can you always have to be this positive, upbeat, and, you know, I'm always happy no matter what's going on? Not necessarily, because then you're not human. A human means you're feeling all spectrum of the emotion. You're not limiting. You're not doing it's a this or that. It's a this and that and that and then and, and, and all the ands that come with it. Right. So, um, so, you know, if you think about it, how many thoughts do you have in a day? Right. And, you know, there's a wide range of different um, numbers that experts throw out there. But how many do you think that you have in a day? Right. Whatever it is you think you have, I can guarantee you that it's 10 to 100 times more than that because thoughts you're not being aware of that are flying by so quick that they're not in your RAS is not bringing them to your awareness because they're not relevant for your, see, if we think about the RAS, think of it as, um, think of it as an embedded program in your DNA to help you survive when you come out into this world, right? It, 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 it's there to protect you so that you're aware of things in your environment externally to, to help you survive and evolve, right? So if you think of that, then how many of those thoughts, when we think of the broad spectrum of thoughts that you have, how many of those thoughts are influenced by the matrix around you, right? How many of your thoughts are based on uh, you know things that you've seen, um, past conditionings that that are that are that have influenced you from teachers to you know peers and adults and um, you name it, right? Think about that because um, you know when you when you think about that you could start to question well if so many of my thoughts are influenced from outside world then which ones are my thoughts? How do I get to that, 
right? Um, how many of those thoughts are original? I mean, originally yours, right? Probably next to none. Because it's you, because we're so infused in this matrix, this holographic matrix, where we're all connected in some way, shape, or form, right? Then thoughts. Think about how many of your thoughts are inspiring, uplifting, and empowering. How many of your thoughts are are dark, depressive, uh, fear based? Um, you know, limit, limited with limited uh, mind frames. And then you go and you ask, okay, well, of those thoughts that I am aware of, what's the external uh, influence? What's the influence from outside of me that's making that, that's that's reflecting that to me, right? So the hack that you that you all unwillingly participated in this, <laughs> was, <laughs> Oops. unknowingly is probably a better word. Unknowingly participated was. The by simply getting your RAS to filter a little tiny bit of code in a different way, 11 11 on 11 11. Right, it became a momentary focal point, a signpost, or a benchmark, if you will, for you to think differently, to ponder new possibilities, to feel some kind of ethereal connection to something bigger than just you. How many of you felt that over the last few days? Okay, um, so let's just take it and then and then I'll continue on here. I just want to make sure everybody's. Um, okay, so I want to see if I can read some here. So we have two belief systems: conscious one and unconscious one. Yeah, that's the so Sonia, that's the internal matrix and the external matrix, right? So uh, and and what we want to get to point is the choice conver conversion point, which has the potential of all of those. What's on the internal? What's on the external? And to come from that place, right? Um, yeah, good. Think about that every day. Um, yeah, you know, and I think it's, I think we're um, collectively, I believe anyways, and I'm seeing and noticing that we're getting more to a place of this realization um, you know, that we have the ability to interject into the matrix um, a choice point, a choice to think, act, and respond differently. And that's what the 11-11 was. We just gave you one choice point twice a day on one day, right? And so many of you are starting to notice that. Now, whether it's whether it's 222, 1212, or any double digits or any other symbol like that, um, you know, I think the question becomes, um, you know, how many of that of those um, thoughts that show up, those emotions that, that are attached to that piece of code, right? Um, were truly, and I mean truly designed by you. You may not have your own thoughts, uh, you know, in its purest essence, in its original thought process, um, you know, because you've got a lot of influences coming in there. But but the meaning that you put to these bits of code out there. Um, how many how many of those are truly designed by you think about it okay who taught you what the digit number 1 means we didn't come out of the out of the womb knowing it <laughs> <laughs> right or any of the other uh, 10 digits right so, and and yet everybody on the planet knows there is a number 1 that's a that's a universal language Right. And quite possibly a, a, a dimensional one, too. We don't know, but we can assume that. Right. Um, you know, so the the the, the one has um, meanings that you were taught growing up. And that could have been from your parents, could have been from um, teachers, it could have been from other family members. You name it. Right. There's so many influences to that digit number one. Right. Or the number 11 putting them together because now they mean something different apparently because <laughs> there's <laughs> <laughs> right. see these are things you need to question about the the matrix or what about okay well if i put one there and then another and then i put another one oh my gosh now it's even that much more right well they're they're all the same thing they're just put in a certain sequence 
you know, so, so Gary, I think we really need to stress, though, at the same time, we're not saying that how you interpret these numbers is wrong. No, never. Not at all. So please don't, you know, I mean, a lot of you have some um, some very uh, uh, dear to your heart uh, attachments to these d digits. That's totally fine. We're just asking you where they came from. Yeah, we want you to look at it and... Um... And also to reflect on if you didn't consciously construct the meaning into those digits for yourself, then even if you had got positive thoughts or uh, thoughts and feelings or they uh, or um, or or negative ones, either side of it, um, they still were not purely yours. You didn't design that coding. You didn't inject that in for the most part, right? So the important hack for today was to know that you can, and many times do, have opportunities to interrupt the, the monotonous flow of creation that you're buying into and interject a new element into the matrix code. Okay? Anybody see the movie Inception? <laughs> if you haven't, you got to go uh... check it out. Oh, okay. we should just have a watch party for that. Movie. Yeah, right. <laughs> Break all kind of copyright rules. <laughs> uh. <laughs> um, so, so again, it's to look at, and, and if you watch enough of our shows, you'll realize we're not on the side of this or that or good or bad. It's, we really want to transcend that and get to a place. It's, it's all of it. It's, it's, but it's, it's how much of it comes from your choice. Right to get to that place of choice, and you know Ross and I have been developing a program over the you know ten almost going on eleven years now uh, called the Infinity Process, and we've run beta beta groups through it, uh, and kind of I can tell you that when they see eleven eleven, it has layer upon layer of self induced coding to have the matrix internally and externally communicate back to them with original, inspirational, uplifting, and empowering experiences. Okay? Um, yes, Joanne, you have to watch Inception. If you, if nobody's watched Inception on this, this channel, um, shame, shame on you. I think we're going to delete you. You're just <laughs> yeah. gone. You have to watch Inception, okay? Um, it's, it's right up there with the Matrix uh, movie and movie sequences. Um, you, you, it's definitely a, a good one. Uh, so, and then uh, another good one, since we're talking about movies, just on a side note, is I believe it's called Number Nine. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Also really good. And so mm -hmm. check those out to Number Nine and um, Infin uh, Inception. So what we're talking about with the Infinity Process is creating Inception type experiences where we're interjecting into the code, into the matrix, internally and externally, things that kind of move us in the direction that we prefer to go. So um, here, step into my infinity matrix, if you dare, for a few minutes. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, I've, I've, been, I've been there. It's good. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike Morpheus, okay, I'm not going to offer you a red pill or a blue pill. Okay, I'm going to propose a third pill that entered into the into the mix that was a color of your choosing, which took you right to the choice convergence point, or what we've been calling the CCP. All right. So um, if you're ready and up for the experience of entering my matrix, just for a few minutes, I want you to type hashtag and whatever the color of your third pill would be. Okay, um, nice. maybe it's a different shade of blue, maybe a different shade of red. Maybe it's a combination of colors. Uh, just go ahead, let's have some fun. Hashtag whatever the color of your third pill would be if there was a third pill that got you to a true choice convergence point, All right? Because if you think about it, just because you take one pill to give you another isolated um, experience or, or uh, reality, it doesn't make any different from the other ones because it was isolated too, just in a different way. Right. All right. So we got some coming in. We got some purple. Uh, who else got some other colors out there? Let's have some funny fun here. Uh, here we go. Rainbow. Nice. Indigo. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> uh, good. Good. All right. <laughs> we got a lot of purple out there. Huh? Royal blue. Mm -hmm. Oh, purple's a popular color. 
Yeah. It's not coincidental. It's in all the stuff we do, guys. Yeah. It's a very high frequency color. Nice. Magenta. Awesome. Okay. So again, and, and just, and just, and just for your edification, every single color that everyone put in perfect for you is absolutely correct. hundred percent. Right. Because this is about your choice convergence point, not someone right. else. And that's exactly. really what we want to emphasize here. Right. And so if, um, so what does 1111 mean? Well, it, again, it means a wide range of different things for every different person on the planet. Um, you know, there's some variation that's going to happen, no matter even if they were in the same room and learned about it same from the same person, they take something different from it based on their own experiences, their own um, reference points. Right. Um, okay, so here we go. All right. Take a deep breath. Seatbelts on. Take a deep breath. Okay, it's only a few seconds. All right. All right. Take a few. Take a breath and allow your consciousness to tag along. Okay. Imagine you've taken your pill, whatever that color may be. All right. And we enter back into my yesterday in the early part of the day, when my RAS latched on to eleven eleven on eleven eleven. The first powerful message that I got was, I maintain my intention until it's done. And it was a strong declaration of my reality, okay, of the reality that I, that I choose, right? And so it, it wasn't just, eh, I maintain my intention like, a, like, a, like an affirmation, if you will. It wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't that. It was more of a declaration of, no, hey, I maintain my intention until it's done. That's the reality that I choose, to be, that I choose it to be. Right, so it's a declaration of my reality, and then immediately, right? Um, immediately, I took myself through an inventory, if you will, of the six markers of transformation that we talked about last week. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, remember, we covered that those last week. So it, it, immediately, it was a, a a a point, a choice point for me to reevaluate those six markers. So I did an inventory. Uh, to make sure and assess what parts of my environment, my behaviors, my capacity my and skills, my beliefs, my identity, and my purpose, whether they were in alignment with or not towards specific goals that I have. Right? Then I recognized all around me, I started to recognize vertical rectangles. Right, so kind of like little ones everywhere, right? In, in in the geometric shape of vertical triangles, right? And they became symbols of being in total alignment on a path with with purpose. And the more I noticed them, the more it was like the un, like the the matrix was reflecting back to me confirmation that I'm working on that path. And confirmation to reassess when I'm when I'm swaying away from it or not, right? And then I felt a deep connection of treasuring today, right? And 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 being present on that path. And then out of nowhere, I heard an inner voice echoing, "I design transformation," right? And I was like, "Yeah," with attitude. I was like. Yeah, I design transformation for myself and for those I love. And instantly, I connected and felt with my root chakra, it started to spiral and activate for me and start to send energy through my body. And this started, and, and that all came from, from that, 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 you know, that code of 11.11 on 11.11, right? And it started me on a series of productive actions that I was able to blast through Okay, I blasted through a ton of stuff that came up for client projects. Okay, so those messages, right, those pre-coded interventions, right, um, and intention that were intentionally coded into my matrix. Okay, and the thing is that of the 23 different degrees of integration with 1111 on 1111, that was only six that impacted me at that time, right? 
And then I didn't even go over, you know, how the uh, mixing that with the other double digit, which is 2020 on 11-11 at 11-11, right? That threw into the mix um, at the same time. And so all these different layers of messages that were my messages for me, it doesn't matter that I, it doesn't mean that I discounted any of the other, um, you know, spiritual stuff that's out there and, and shared out there that we saw in, it doesn't discount any of that. It just now adds a piece to it that I can say is mine. Right. Gary, if I can interject one thing, too, so everybody really, really understands everything that Gary just described happened instantaneously. Boom, 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 boom. He didn't just like stop and ponder. Hmm. I wonder. It was like that. That's what's going on here. So don't think that, oh, my gosh, I'm going to have to stop every time I see this. It's like, no, this just happens just like that. It's yeah, so ingrained. Joanne, Joanne said, we are talking absolutely 100%, Joanne. We're talking with a deep root relationship with the universal the universe and matrix, right? That's what we're talking about. And that can only come when you come from a place of choice, right? Full choice. And, um, and to know that whatever choice you make is the right choice for your path, your destiny, your journey, your experience of the matrix, right? Um, so what if you could completely design your reality in a way that made you unstoppable? That's the question we want you to think about, because that's what the whole purpose of these live streams are about and this group and the experiments that we're throwing with you, throwing out to you, right? We've already been building your foundation for you through these uh, live streams if you've been listening to all the streams. And if you haven't, join in the group if you're not already there. Well, let me drop it into the, uh, let me take this one out of the picture. All right, so you'll, you should see the link. If you're not already a part of the group, um, join the group and um, use that as a place where we all experiment together on how we can impact and influence our own personal uh, infinity matrices, matrices, right? Um, you know, when you, if you haven't already gone there, go ahead and um, it's also running along the bottom here, so you can see the actual URL itself, the the web address itself. And um, when you get there, if you haven't already done it, fill out the entry questions uh, to help us understand what type of content you want us to bring. Plus, you also get the opportunity to get on our VIP list when you look through those questions. You'll see how to do that. Okay. Once you're in the group, go to the units tab, right? So across the top, uh, and I know Facebook has been kind of doing some messy stuff with their interface and stuff like that. But right now, the newest version shows it across the top. Um, you'll see it uh, under our cover image. And just click the units tab, and then you can catch up on all the replays from our, from our first live stream to current. And you'll start to see how this all starts to build. Okay? And... Um, and, and, and start to explore more of how the signs, symbols, digits, the experiences that you have, how those things are impacting or influencing and what control can you have over those things so that you can start to um, be more of a uh, of an artist, right? So you can, you can start mm -hmm. to paint your... Um, your uh, That's a good analogy. Yeah, so you can paint your easel exactly the way that you want it, and then you can step into that reality, All right? Hey, Cheryl, just joined the group. Awesome. Good to see that. <laughs> um, remember forward. All right, so so that's really what – so what does 11.11 mean to you guys? Again, it means whatever you want it to mean. We wanted to kind of bring to your attention that it's just a piece of code. That's it. It in and of itself – has no in, in inherent meaning. It's just a symbol that goes lying down. Remember we talked about patterns, <laughs> right? So it's this lying down, lying down, lying down, right? Um, and it's just a pattern, right? We have attached over the years, either by someone you know, influencing it or, or our own interpretation of things, uh, we've embedded into those digits what they mean. And our suggestion is, 
if you can find more and more hacks, right, in the code and interject more and more of your own messages in that code, then you can have not just twice a day, right? Um, you can have a variety of different experiences where you're being influenced in a way by your choosing. Right. And we're going to go into more of this stuff and we're, we're going to unravel this stuff for you guys. Um, you know, as we continue through, we've already been doing that. Trust me, we're laying some foundation for you. OK, um, it's kind of it's kind of like uh, it, the, for those of you that are out there that do affirmations, say in the morning, you do them for you know an hour every morning. You do your affirmations, which is great. It's a fantastic habit to have. Our question is, what about the other 23 hours of the day when life starts to get in the way? That's the big question. So they can they they have their 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 purpose. The idea though is for when we when we say we are controlling the CCP, your convergence point, we are. So it allows you to see everything. You know, you know, if we want to refer back to the to the matrix, when you, you know when Neo all of a sudden sees literally sees the code you start to get to that point where all of a sudden you're seeing the stuff that's coming into your environment, into your world and you're choosing. Okay. And somebody, uh, Jennifer, Gary, Gary, Jennifer asked, um, she goes, uh, she goes, why do you call it the matrix instead of the universe? It's a good question. <sighs> well, First of all, I think we're in a multiverse. That's the first part of it. Um, I, I think I, I, I think that we're not just influenced by a universe. Um, I think there's a lot of other influences that kind of flow over, um, and there's more and more scientific evidence that's bringing that to light. Um, uh, but also, if you think of matrix, if if you think of it as this interconnected. Um, you know, system where, you know, it's, it's it's holographic in nature where one thing impacts the other and, and there's a connection amongst all of the pieces within the matrix. And all we can experience is our point on that matrix, right? So if you think of a, uh, you know, a room full of um, um, Br uh, brass or even silver marbles, right? And it's just filled on the ground. Well, they reflect everything, right? You're seeing one reflection of all the others in that one. But if you're that one marble, all you experience is you, mm -hmm. right? But you're a part of the matrix, right? However, each um, of those other marbles are going to have an influence on you. Yeah, right. And, and that's I'm why we're talking about the matrix, the flow of the matrix coming into that choice convergence yep. point. OK, that's that's the big difference. So. I my my response to that was I wouldn't get too hung up on terminology. Um, yeah, and, and watch our first stream it, when we go through how mm -hmm. we, well, exactly. we Good point. And, and and and, you know, our definition and, and how we kind of lay it out for the purpose of what we're presenting. Um, you know, so just go back to the tab on the members page. Click the first stream we did and, and, and was specifically on what is the infinity matrix. And we kind of go through that and um, and, and cover that in pretty good, I think, in pretty good depth there. So mm -hmm. it's a good place to go for it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And All once right. again, these are our definitions. You can choose to agree with our definitions or you can modify yeah. or you can have a completely different one. Again, we are not telling you what to think or what to call anything. This is but our they, terminology so that we can better communicate to you in in a in, in a in a relative manner. Yeah, and the um, thing that Ross and I really uh, were very strong on when we started to put all this together was um, to really come from a place and continue to reassess for ourselves. So our vertical triangle for this vertical rectangle for this is. Um, it, it it reminds us to make sure that everything we're doing we're doing in what we call open source means that what we put in there is not the be all end all. It's something that could we present and then whoever steps into that can choose to alter, shift and adjust so that it works better for them. Uh, Framework. And, and yeah, so, so it becomes something that's uniquely and individually and specifically yours, 
right? My matrix, yes, there's a framework. There's a um, some, you know, there's some uh, structure. That's probably a good word, better word for it. There's some structure around this so that, you know, so that I know that I am influencing and know that I can and know that I win. I want to influence the, the matrix, um, but it's still uniquely mine. Right. The, you know, I talked about the 23 different degrees of integration uh, for just 11, 11, 11, 11. Right. And only six of them inter inter interplayed with me at that time in that experience that I was talking about. And then later in the day when I noticed love, it was a different set that came to me right? in a different combination for a different reason, for a different purpose. Because context. Yeah, it's changed based on the context and what's going on, what I need. My matrix is set up to feed me what I need. You can think of this as the, you know, have you ever been uh, in a in a downtown area when they're building a high rise and all they put up is all the girders. So you just put up the, the, the steel structure. OK, so if you use Gary and I as an example, we use the same steel structure. All right. But if you look at the north side of that building, which is my side, that's how I built my structure. And if you look at the south side of the building, which is Gary's side, it's going to be a little bit different. And then if you take uh, uh, you take my wife and and she looks at at her side and she has the east side, it's going to be a little bit different than mine, a little bit different than Gary's. Yeah. Okay, but the overall structure, that framework inside, is still the same. It's the code, right? The code is. It's the code. the code that creates exactly is the same, right? right. And Gary, I didn't mean to leave out Mo. So, in you know, so Mo got the West Side. Yeah. <laughs> so Mo, if you're watching, I wasn't, you know, <laughs> favoritism or anything like that. Yeah. Um, but so think of it like that. Um, we are offering and showing people that framework, that code. Um, if you're, you know, if you're into computers, it's the same thing. When you um, when you look at uh, uh, Firefox, is probably a good 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 example. It's an open source, and everybody is welcome to go in and mm -hmm. offer changes to it to better improve it same with wordpress yep. yeah 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 wordpress another one mm -hmm. so you have a lot of these different types of 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 uh, programs and things like that that are out there and this is cannot kind of based on this except it's not computer based it's it's uh it's biological computer based so it's it's this mm -hmm. yeah it's the quantum code um absolutely and so um you know, let's go through some quick questions here. So a uh, question on the movie recommendation, the movie nine is, so yeah, it's not the movie nine. I believe it's called number nine, isn't it? Ron? Number nine. Yeah. It's yes, called it number is. nine, right? It's number so, nine. Um, we'll see if we can find a cover image for that and post it somewhere on the page. Uh, same with inception. Um, there was another one here. Uh, okay. Can we all try to make COVID go away? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. You you know that's let's talk about it yeah. for a second. It's in, okay? in the air, yeah. You know, I mean, I I did a post um I think it was last week uh where the 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 image was this, this giant vortex. Okay? And, and you have a choice. Are you going to get sucked into the vortex or you're going to just simply observe it? Um I think we can all agree that yes there is there is a virus that's out there. But you don't have to be afraid. You don't, 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 there's a lot of fear mongering and uh, for whatever reason that all that's happening, it, it, it is. And, uh, you know, the virus is dangerous, but you know, there's a lot that you can do. It's more of, okay, great. You know, I'm going to look at this information. I'm going to look at this information. I'm going to look into the machine, but I'm not going to get emotional about it. I'm not going to get sucked into the vortex. Okay, you can, you know, uh, if if you took the 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 emotional intensity that many people have now um, about this this particular virus, and let's say they took that same intensity and they put it into about an automobile, okay, they'd be walking everywhere. Okay, so think of it like that. This is like you know you take. Just this is this is how I kind of can separate it out. It's like if if I was this intense about this or this or this, it would kind of be absurd. So you know, be safe, be cautious, but don't 
get sucked into the vortex. You can choose not to. And we're not telling you do or don't do. So it, you know, correct. Saying you, it it seems to be from our experience more resourceful not to get sucked into it. Um, you know, we 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 feel from our experience that we have more choice and we can then live a life that we want to live instead of one that's being dictated to us. Very right? good. Yes. Um, you know, and so then we also had. I just want to kind of bring this. I noticed that. So Cheryl, first of all, congratulations, Cheryl. Um, Ten days sober, fantastic. Yeah, and so uh, suggestion for you to retrain your brain. Well, start with um, go to our 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 pay our group, join the group, go to the units, start on number one, and start to apply everything we're doing towards towards your experience right now. Right. Start to understand what's going on with the matrix. Uh, last week we covered a really good one, which is is quite powerful for your type of scenario. Uh, anybody in any type of um, you know want to really create powerful behavior modification changes. Last week is it was a pretty powerful process. Um, you know, looking at those uh, six different markers, right, and then assessing them and aligning them to your ultimate goal and objective. So, um, so that's a, a quick answer. There's a lot more to it for sure, but you can kind of get some pieces out of that. Continue to come to these um, live streams and then apply what we give you to what it is you want to go, a goal, whatever it's, whether it's um, your fitness, your health, uh, your business, apply this stuff to the matrix reality that you're experiencing. Okay. That's what we're doing. We're not doing it just for the purpose of talking to people for an hour on, on, on Facebook or YouTube or wherever else we're streaming this thing. Exactly. And Cheryl, one more piece too. When you, uh, 11 days ago, you made a choice. Yeah. And now we're talking about 11, 11. So start to attach that right. into the meaning of what 11. So every time you see number 11, so here's a quick on the fly uh, intervention, right? So every time you see the number 11 now, it can be a reminder that you're on the path and to remind you the things you need to do on that path. And then to make sure your environment is, is, um, is, is set up in a way to support that path. And then you start to look at uh, you know, developing more skills to stay on that path. And then, um, you know, so that's how, so if you take last week's lesson, that's how you would kind of run with this um, and and utilize the, the, the synchronicities that the universe is always, always, always putting in front of you to, to give you guidance and direction and support. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. Yes, thank um, you. If you have more, we're, we'll get to everybody's questions. Uh, we picked out a few um, during the show, but we will get to everybody's questions. Um, <clears throat> and when you, you know, post them underneath the underneath this live cast, and uh, we, if you're new to the group, we are very interactive. If you post some questions in there, we will get to them. Um, <clears throat> we're not here just for for clicks and all that kind of stuff. We're here to you know give you you know more and more information just to simply help you make better choices yeah that serve you yeah and and explore the third pill <laughs> explore the third pill because there's 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 things there that are um that could possibly give you uh new experiences that you haven't had before and um yeah, let's have some fun. Again, throw us some comments on what you've noticed when you when you start to interject your own things um, into the matrix, into the code. Uh, again, we'll, along the way, continue to give, give you more structure to different pieces of it. Um, little by little, we'll get there, and little by little, we'll code ourselves out of this COVID thing. Um, little by little, you know, we'll, we'll code ourselves into a collective um, a collective harmonious agreement that uh, you know the reality what we choose is the reality we we end up experiencing yeah so Gary created the concept of the third pill not too long ago and it opened up um, both of us as far as the this concept and uh, there was just exponential growth when uh, when he developed that uh, that concept of, of the program and uh, it's it's powerful. We'll talk about the third pill a lot more in the in the future. This was just our way of actually kind of introducing it to you as well. Um, but uh, it works, Cheryl. I mean, this is definitely the, the 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 right place for you. And if you have friends that are in the same situation, you know, 
have them hop on and let them make the choice if, if this is what you know what they need what what they think will help them um i see this in the future um actually maybe possibly having a program similar to this using this framework to uh to help people in in, in this situation um but uh, congratulations that's powerful all right okay so if you're new uh and uh, this is the first time you've heard us and you haven't joined the group please it's very, very important that you do answer the questions that uh, are uh, asked when you're joining the group. Otherwise, if you just click past that. Yes, yeah, um, I wanted to ask about just... replays, and that's why I kind of threw it up there. So, yes, yeah, so, right. um, so go to the group. We, that's where we store all them. Under Units tab, we keep all the, the replays there, and so then they're easy to find and access instead of having to search right. through tons and tons of feeds. All right? All right, thank you, everyone, for being on, and right. we'll see you next Thursday. Bye-bye. Right. <laughs> Take care. Okay.